two weeks till Witch Queen, which means two twabs till Witch Queen, which means they're starting to get more and more juicy, juicy good details. So this one is honestly a short one in comparison to the last one, just because the last one was all the weapons detailing and all that, and that was very long of a read. So this week they kept it a little bit sweet and short. The main two things they touch upon is a legendary campaign and revealing some more and more sweet exotic goodness to us. So, once again, they gave us the uh, vid doc for Witch Queen uh, as a link, and there's also an interactive experience available on the uh, Bungie site, which is basically a quick recap of a bunch of details that you need to know regarding the Witch Queen campaign if you haven't been keeping so up to date regarding details. Now, they also talk about, once again, recapping on Void 3.0. This is all stuff they've already covered once before. They cover the differences between some of the supers they made, as well as all the aspects that can be found. They also give links to the blog post and brief details regarding all of three. I will cover them again just because that's repeating the stuff I've already said before. Now, they do mention that for new lights, when you get into Destiny, they are going to um, kick you off with the Void subclass, the brand new one, and it ex uh, instead of the other ones. And they will set you up with these subclass setups brand new for the people who show up so they can get to better acclimating to the new and up and coming subclass system for hunters you'll be given mobius quiver a marksman's dodge triple jump snare bomb and scatter grenade for titans you'll get sentinel shield with the tall barricade catapult lift shield throw and magnetic grenade as well as warlocks getting the vortex nova bomb healing rift burst glide pocket singularity for your charge melee as well as vortex grenade now they do mention as well that uh new characters let's see uh where was it where was it uh during the schism mission players acquire a new quest called learning light that teaches more about the their subclass abilities more aspects and fragments can be unlocked by visiting ikora right in the tower so you'll be giving this setup but you can also visit ikora to do something to unlock the rest of it that is all for the new light players starting now touching on the legendary campaign they first off telling us our rewards for doing the legendary campaign Double chest rewards offering one to three chests extra permission. Each chest gives you world pool loot gear as well as XP upgrade modules and glimmer. In addition, legendary players will be able to earn throne world armor and lock at a faster rate. And basically, higher risk, higher reward. Now, bigger details as well. Exclusive uh, rewards for doing legendary difficulty. Completing all missions rewards players with the following. A new emblem exclusive to those who complete the campaign on legendary difficulty. A triumph required for the newest title for the throne world, the location title, like Splintered or Cursebreaker, I believe it was. A set of gear 20 above the soft cap at 1520. That is going to be crucial to getting ready for raid day because that is a heavy jump. 20 power on the <laughs> 20 power through hard cap. That is actually excessively high jumps as well as eight upgrade modules new witch queen exotic armor typically reserved for the public event lost sectors and all that uh, wild and exclusive bunch of rewards more on that in the future so there is a genuinely good reason if you can do legend i recommend you do it just because there's actual genuine rewards that can actually help you aside from just an emblem saying hey i did it now going into the difficulty they did say to set expectations Legendary Campaign is designed to be harder than a Legend Nightfall, so a Tier 3 Nightfall, although it's easier than a solo dungeon or running Grandmaster. So, if you're a, re you're a regular Grandmaster player and you have your fire team, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, enemies will be more difficult, more aggressive, higher damage resistance, and more challenges to stagger. And shields are stronger to unmatched damage types, but I don't think match game will be equipped. They'll just be a little bit more resistant. Now, as well, the challenge of Legend also comes from switching up interactions and infiltration, like swapping on Elite for a boss or having an influx of more red bar foes in certain areas. Now, overcapping? No, you cannot do that. Each mission caps you at certain power, like raid contest mode, for every single mission, depending on how far throughout the campaign. And if you're under level, be prepared for a tough fight. That's how it, Destiny always will be. So, yeah. But as well, they do mention that it is more so... Um, uh, important to deal enemy damage and health scales to match your fire team though it won't be one to one so there will be scaling for how many people are there regarding health and enemy damage so it is a little bit of an easier go even if you're all alone as well they did change this is some important details they changed up revives so every player has one revive or limited one revive per player i think that means that you can only revive yourself once you can still be revived by other people but also a shared timer of 40 seconds for an automatic wipe like the raid mechanic where if people are down for too long you have 40 seconds to get them up before it just wipes everyone 
So they're definitely making it play for keeps, but this shouldn't be too challenging to most players. Now, as well, the new mansion, toning down the difficulty. You can't do it mid-mission. You're going to have to go to orbit and just come back at a lower difficulty and come back to legend mode, whether or not you have more power, better gear, or just more people. Now, I also mentioned this is the Bungie Heroes Welcome. This is a new community thing. It's a com community-focused spotlight. It's something that I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be for, but it's a new ongoing video adventures that will focus on the players themselves in a vibrant and explosive tribute. So I think it is a uh, kind of like a, just a destiny best of content creation or sort of thing. But it's a new community that focus thing to give us some examples of some of the stuff they'll be featuring that sort of stuff. But a new important thing, new exotics. This is the details that we've been waiting for, and that's what every new exotic is going to do. We've gotten teasers for some of them and zero bits for other, and now we learn that. So right off the bat, the Lorely Splendor Helm for Titans. Cauterizing Flame perk that allows for sunspots to heal players when they have Sun Warrior, aka the Sunspot perk. And if you're critically wounded, no big deal. This perk also ensures that a sunspot is created in your location to give you one last fighting chance with that quick grenade and melee ability recharge and longer supers. Plus more damage, always a good thing. So this is going to be pretty dang good. Sunspots might be useful again in endgame content if you can heal yourself off of it. Now, they also tell us about the Horfrost Z chest plate. Basically, your barricade gets turned into a wall of stasis crystals that I believe is three tall crystals left, three tall crystals right, and one short one right in the middle. And it also gives the perk, or the perk, the perk of rally barricades in which anyone behind it gets weapon reload speed, stability, and range buff, as well as the crystals slowing any targets that get too close to it. Now, moving into Warlocks, they show us those new pair of boots that we're talking about, basically. Seeking filaments make it so that with the Devouring Rift perk, these shiny walking sticks of power will grant a player devour whenever they cast their Empowering Rift. Which, need I say more, you cast your Empowering Rift, you get devour, killing gets you heals, killing gets you a grenade, devour reprocs, and you're still in a powering rift, so killing is easier. That is going to be so good for void builds. Now, as well, the new uh, uh, Osmiomancy, I think that's how, this is basically the stasis turret build exotic coming soon, just because it makes us that um, you have two grenade charges for cold snap grenades, duh, double stasis turrets at once, as well as making it recharge faster on direct impact. The Seeker spawn from Cold Snap Grenades also have travel bonuses too. So, that's going to be nuts in uh, PvP. So, yeah, just prepare for Cold Snap Grenades to be meta again. Now, for the Hunters, the Blight Ranger uh, Helm basically makes it so that your Arc Reflect on Middle Tree Arc Staff will ref have an increased amount of damage on Reflect and Orbs of Power Generation increase for allies. So it's sort of the reflection of Ursa Furiosa for Arc Strider Hunters. So it's going to have some sort of bot. That orb generation might actually be handy just because of the reworks to masterworking nowadays. And the last one, a unseen, well, not unseen, but unknown, the Renewal Grasps to look for with the Depths of Dustfield perk. This gives Guardians a much larger, larger radius for Dustfield grenades while also nerfing incoming damage for allies within the Dustfield's range. Any targets locked within that space will also deal up reduced amounts of damage. Yeah, so they pretty much say it straight up, and it's correct. Mini Silence and Squall Gauntlets. Which, it's also a curious detail. It seems to be Clovis Spray, but also that looks like a little Black Armory logo right there. So is the Black Armory making weapons and uh, armor once again? Who knows? But... That was all the new exotics. They do have more usual stuff of errors, known issues, and blah. They haven't been exactly blaming that to us. But they also tell us the Witch Queen release schedule, which basically uh, Destiny 2 will go offline the night before. The preload the same night will happen later. will be available on all platforms at 9 a.m. at least. Uh, I think that's Western time. Destiny 2 will be ba brought back online with the hotfix playable on all platforms. And then at reset time, maintenance schedule is to be completed, which will should supposedly be the launch of Witch Queen as well. So, those wondering about the preloads and all that, details all right here. Now, as well, they do mention with Bungie Rewards, the a list of stuff that will be going away uh, at this time on February 21st. The Alf Flies the Wolf pin for Galahorn, the Strange Coin from 30th Anniversary, Moments of Triumph 2021 t-shirt, the Beyond Light Artifact Coin set, the Techion Hoodie, the Aggre Scepter Beanie, as well as all of these pins for various titles. 
All of those things will no longer be purchasable through Bungie Rewards come Witch Queen. So if you haven't gotten these or want to get them, I'd recommend you do it. Time is running out to acquire them, as well as earn them, period. So, players who not completed the in-game achievement for any of the above Bungie Rewards will have until 28th to purchase said things. Basically, you have to earn them by this time, and pe people who have completed them have until the 28th to officially buy them. Now... As part of the scheduled downtime prior to Wish Queen, Bungie Rewards will not be available to purchase during the downtime window. Now, they do update more things about Twitch gift sub bounty rewards. They will be updated with Witch Queen players who are looking to obtain the current deregistrate emblem should complete the Twitch gift sub bounty to play their in-game reward before scheduled downtime. And as well, we weapon cycling per the usual. There is a lot of stuff that's going to be vaulted come and a lot of we weapon cycling. So follow this link if you wish to know everything that will be officially going away. Now... The usual list of emerging known issues there, and then it comes through to the usual movies and arts of the week to close out the TWAB. So, they give us the full details on the legendary campaign of how it's going to be more difficult, the rewards and genuine benefits to actually doing it on legendary difficulty, as well as some details regarding all the new exotics, and holy crap, all even my friends are already build crafting just to prep for those new exotic perks. That makes sense.